Hello everyone, my name is Isaac and this is my brand new four wheel camper Hawk base model and I got the rollover couch option along with some other really cool things. I wanted to make this video today and do a complete walkthrough of this camper, the options that I chose to get and why I chose to get this four wheel camper over everything that's on the market and including their own options why I didn't get a fully built out one so we're not going to talk about the truck at all it's just going to be about the camper let's get into it I realized that I didn't bring a tape measure so when we get back to the shop I will take some measurements and we I'll put that in the description below as far as how wide it is inside and how tall the headroom is so we're going to start with the exterior of the camper and as you can see, it is a pop-up camper. So if you don't know anything about four-wheel campers, we're gonna kind of go over a few things for people who may not know what these are. And if you know a little bit or you're in the market for one, we're just gonna do an overview and a tour of this guy. So it's got, the, the side is aluminum and it's one of their new aluminum diamond plate deals. Uh, the cool thing about four-wheel campers is they do frame everything with aluminum tubing it's skinned with aluminum. The reason that really is awesome is because aluminum is light and it can't really rust. So it'll last a really long time. <clears throat> time. So the camper pops up and it's got four windows. It's got a window, two windows on each side. And then that's like a, it's basically like a canvas. It's really heavy duty. Don't think that's just a tent material up there. Uh, and I will link four wheel campers website if you want to get into the nitty gritty and really check it out I'm just doing the best I can with the knowledge I have and what I got I got the base model aluminum siding on this side it also has an emergency window so that can also open up and vent and it's got screens but like if you're inside you need to get out quickly that's an emergency window that will pop out and you can come out of that it's got six latches that you need to unlatch four over here and then two in the back. One of the biggest things you need to know about that is you need to make sure it's unlatched before you try and pop it because it will bend the roof. If you don't, I was stressed that a lot. And it does have the struts. So I guess I'll talk about my thoughts on popping it. It's not like super, super easy, but it's not super, super hard either, if that makes sense. Uh, it's totally a manageable deal. I have not done it 
a lot yet, so I can't really give you, you know, too much on that. But as I use this thing more, I'll, I'll do an update on that. But so far, it's not too bad to pop. The struts really help a lot. These guys have been around since 1972, so they really know what they're doing. I was considering doing a DIY one, DIY camper, but it's like experience goes so far. And, you know, I was able to, to work with them on this deal and it just made more sense. So, super cool. It's all aluminum. It's watertight. I've been in the rain, no leaks. And let's keep going around the side. We will talk about these. So it's got LED marker lights. So then when this thing is popped down, and you're driving, you know, you can kind of see where your clearance is at. It's really cool, especially this is a black camper at night. You can't hardly see it. So those LED marker lights let other people know where your vehicle situation is and you can kind of tell where your vehicle is. So LED marker lights on the side here. On this side, it's pretty bare. With the base model, it doesn't have a window or water heaters or any of that stuff. And I was just at a four wheel camper shop like one of their sales floor places and they were like it looks so different because i guess the old heater that they normally install takes up a good portion this has the brand new thermostat controlled truma heater that they're i think they're gonna start offering i'm not sure i talked them into putting it in this unit but like the exterior is just this little guy and as a guy who's installed a bunch of heaters and built a lot of things, I can appreciate how awesome that exhaust is and how simple that installation, I'm assuming, was. I kind of want to install one so I know. And here, these are just vents to your battery box. Let's go around the back. We're going to take the camera off of the tripod for a second because that way you guys can really get the idea of everything going on here. So I got the Aluminous aluminum steps that go in your hitch receiver. And I will say it makes it so much easier getting in and out of there. Whole bunch of other options. Rubbermaid sells a four wheel campers or, or four wheel campers sells a Rubbermaid little ladder which I was thinking after getting this aluminum, aluminum hitch thing might have been a better idea because with the portable Rubbermaid ladder, I could use that ladder to help with the latches. The, the, my truck isn't lifted. It's just leveled out with a leveling kit. And most people lift their trucks. I'm only 5'6", and I can barely get to those latches. So having doing this over again i probably would have got the cheaper rubber made portable ladder because not only can i use it to get in and out i can use it to help with the latches something to think about especially with like most people lifting their trucks let's get on to the whole back door thing here uh, i apologize for it being super shaky i don't have a cameraman and we're just making this work so let's do this we're gonna shut it and that's what the back looks like normally you can get an option to have some floodlights i didn't uh, but they come standard with this porch light which is nice so that you can kind of see your door when you're coming up to the camper i got the option of extra little steps here just to help with getting on the roof or unlatching i'm pretty sure these ones come normally just like little steps and they have a little extra solar port here so you could throw a solar panel on the ground get a little extra solar i got the aluminum or aluminous axe and shovel kit which is just mounted right there on the jacks so it has the jack brackets so you, and i got jacks too so that you can put jacks on it and remove it from your truck door is really nice let's talk about this first propane so i took the propane bottles out for now two of them fit in here this connects to the propane system and then it's got a little vent right here shuts super cool and then uh the door it's got this cool 
situation here if you open the door so you got the locks here for the door and then you got this and you got this to help you get in so super secure but check this out this is really cool and then this uh oh where's my camera man my shoulder this goes boom like that and that'll keep your door from swinging around super cool right and then check this out so you got a screen door and I'm not used to having that in the buses and then you've got you can lock it from inside you have a window here I got the quilted thermal pack so that it just helps and then you've got your blinds here super cool let's see if I can open this <laughs> uh oh not being in there uh, let me figure that out that's pretty much it for the outside of the camper one thing I didn't really talk about was on the roof I do have the tracks I have the Yakima roof rack deals and I have two max air fans and a 250 watt solar panel those were all add-ons I don't think I would do the Yakima tracks again with what I have learned you can't stand on that roof makes it really difficult to get to those racks up there so I would do everything I did up there except for those racks apparently you can like be on your stomach and like shimmy and things like that but I just got it we'll see how I feel about it later my first initial thought and impression is I wish I wouldn't have spent the money on those because I don't really see how it's gonna be easy to get anything up there or off of there but let's go inside the camper and we'll talk about what's going on in there i'm pretty sure we're gonna have to handhold this in here because it's you know there's not enough room for a tripod and things like that so i'm gonna do my best okay so i got the hawk base model right which means normally it wouldn't come with this rollover couch and it would just look like this on both sides that's all an add-on. Let's shut the door so we can keep the light the same. Much better. <laughs> so, uh, if you've never been on my channel before, I've built school buses for years and years and years, built all kinds of different sizes. I've installed and done most all this stuff by hand custom, right? I'm not gonna get into all the reasons why I did this in this video, but uh, we're gonna focus on showing you what's going on in this camper now we'll work we'll start back here and then I guess we'll kind of work our way around so the back you've got obviously the door we already talked about that I think we missed the window I have the quilted thermal pack which is an add-on and I'll talk about the add-ons when I was looking into four-wheel campers I noticed some of the older ones this wood was kind of rotted and need to be replaced. So I am very happy that they're using a composite now, which means this can never get, you know, it can never rot, which is amazing. Uh, it's got the mirror here, which I haven't even pulled the film off yet. Super cool. And you've got the fire extinguisher back there one thing i thought was really cool with the rollover couch option is you do have some room back here you could probably fit a duffel bag or storage stuff back there pretty easily which is awesome but one of the biggest reasons i love the rollover couch include or couches in general even in my own builds is look at the storage underneath the cushions that's a lot so they've got it in two zones it lists right here and that's a ton of storage more here that's a ton of storage you can keep camping chairs huck all kind of stuff in there which is really awesome over here you've got this little space under the end of the couch right here and i see that a lot of people put put toilets right there and I think I will do the same. Uh, there's those little four deals inside there too. Until you get to the turnbuckles, they say that you should keep an eye on it and check it and kind of tighten them up pretty often to keep it from getting loose. 
let's keep going this way. We forgot to mention this. So just a little, little shelf deal here. I don't know. I was thinking I'd keep some flashlights, things like that in there. And then these are the uh, bungee cords that you kind of hook to each side so that when you drop the roof, it'll pull this canvas in, which is super nice. And then you've got these windows. I have the quilted thermal pack pulled down. I have this down and then this will actually open more to get some more airflow. And you have a bug screen, super cool. Now on the roof, you can kind of see that you, they got this material up here. They got this alarm. Uh, I have two max air fans, which I'll talk about that. I wish those were max air deluxes so that I could run them in the rain. I live in Oregon and it rains most of the time. For the amount of money you're paying for these, I 100% believe you should get the nice fans, but they work great. As we work our way this way, we have the bed. This, I can sleep side to side there. I'm gonna attach the four wheel campers website so you can get all the dimensions on exactly what this is lengthwise, but I can sleep side to side. And if I'm riding solo without my family, this pulls out into a king size bed. Look, still got all that storage underneath. King size bed for the fan. Everybody can chill up there. But if I'm riding solo, I can uh, totally sleep there and not pull that out. And also, if you want to stealth camp, I notice you don't have to pop it. You can totally feel okay in here and sleep on the couch. Another reason the rollover couch is rad. So anyways, let's keep going. So you've got that pulls out into a king. And then you have another window here, which I just have the thermal pack on. And that's pretty much it for that side. Now, in a fully built out one, you would have your kitchen cabinet, sink, things like that. I didn't add that. One of the reasons I didn't add that was I'm, it's only, I only personally have a half ton truck, right? And I was trying to keep the weight down. Plus I kind of wanted to build my own thing and use the space how I wanted to use it. But at the end of the video, I'll talk about more of that. But that was my, one of my main reasons that I didn't do that. So this is completely empty. And then here you've got these two compartments. This opens up. You can see that they have the wiring in there. It's got a DC to DC charger. So it'll charge when the vehicle is driving super rad. And then this just a little extra little cubby hole. And then this opens up to your truck bed and you can get to the turnbuckles. I was thinking I could chuck dirty clothes in there, keep it out of my way as I'm living in it and then pull them out. That's kind of what I was thinking about doing with it. Let's go this way. So this is all an add on again. This would be normally all the way down on both sides. So I added propane. So this is a propane box that's outside. You seen that earlier. And then I added this little deal here, this little cabinet. So you've got this domatic stove situation here. Super nice. I've never owned anything domatic before. And I got to say, that's really nice. A uh, little countertop. And I guess I'm going to touch on that real quick. So on the outside of the bus, or not the bus, on the outside of the camper, they're offering some more modern styling, right? With the aluminum, uh, you know, pretty modern, right? This is kind of like old RV style, like this countertop, this siding. I wish they kind of offered some newer stuff. Uh, I think it's all coming, but they don't have it yet, which sucks for me. But anyways, I would love to see bamboo counters, some more modern siding, but that's what it is. So as we come over here, this is the new Truma thermostat controlled heater. So you just uh, turn it like I don't have propane in here, so I'm not going to turn it on. And then you would turn, oops, so you turn this on uh, 
I'm not gonna show you how to use it. Anyway, super cool. This is the monitor for it. And then it exhausts out of here. And this is just a vent for that. And then it's got some 12 volt here with the 12 volt socket, some USBs. I will say this, there's no 110 in this model. Battery monitor, and then you open this, and then you've got your batteries. I have 270 amp hours of Dakota lithium. And then in here you have a battery shut off switch. You can't really see it, but it's in there. So you get the battery, propane, stove, some 12 volt. You do not have 110 and yeah i think that's pretty much in here so i think i'm gonna grab the tripod now set you up and talk about why i picked this over everything else and kind of my plans on what to do with it and why i think that this is the best model that you can go in my opinion let's grab the tripod all right Let's talk about a few things that I've learned throughout this process and uh, I would recommend knowing what I know now. And again, I, I come from a background of actually building campers. The reason I switched from a bus to this is because I wanted four wheel drive. Uh, trucks that are four wheel drive are way more affordable than vans that are four wheel drive. Uh, and bus, it's, it's like I've, I've done the math and it, I was quoted $18,000 to start to convert one of my 4x4 four four, um, or one of my buses into a 4x4. Four four. It's like, it's, it's about $20,000, right? You could buy a truck that's 4x4 four four for well under $20,000. You can pick them up for seven grand, right? Which you, you wouldn't necessarily buy a brand new camper to put on a truck like that, but you could get a used camper to put on a truck like that. So. I wanted four by four. The other thing is I like the fact that the house can be separated from, this is the house, the camper, right? This can be separated from the vehicle. Think about it. And I know plenty of people who have their bus breaks down. Mine's done it too. Their vehicle breaks down. It's in the shop getting worked on. If you were living in something like this full time, you've lost your house. You're in a hotel, right? So the thing about going a route like this is let's say the truck has a catastrophic failure i take the camper off i live in the camper still and i fix the truck or upgrade the truck also if i wanted to get a new camper or whatever i can take this off and sell it separate so there's definitely now i'm not saying one thing's better than the other but there's pros and cons to all sides these are the reasons i went this route i like that this can be separated i like that I can, and, and yeah, that, that's, I like that the house can be separated from the truck, right? Now, there's a lot of people buying the Project M's from Four Wheel Camper. I almost did too. They're lighter, they're really cool. You, you, it's just basically a topper that sits on your truck bed shell. You build it out however you want, or you don't build it, and you keep your truck. Pros and cons to everything. Again, I'm not gonna sit here and say one's better than the other, but I'm gonna tell you why I did what I did. Now, I was thinking about going that route because I, I do like building, and I thought it'd be really cool to do a whole build series, build it out, but then I was thinking, it's like, I was looking at the weight. People are gonna get mad when I say this. I was looking at the weight, and by the time I built out a Project M, I'm getting close to what this is already. And then I was running the numbers. And by the time I'm buying all that stuff and it ends up getting close to this anyways. Uh, and then one of the things that really that I thought about was I heard somebody say that they needed to have worked out on their truck. They had a project M and the mechanic wanted them to take the camper off. The project M's, the toppers, you can take them off. They're not as easy as something like this, but and if you don't have it built out, it's not a big deal, right? But if I built in cabinets, drilling holes through my truck bed, running vents and water lines and all that, like you're not pulling that off. So at that point, it becomes just like a van build where it's pretty much one thing. If I want a different camper, got to sell the truck in the camper. And that's only if you did that. 
you know, I went this route for, I wanted it to be, so, anyways, by doing the base model, everything I do to the camper stays in the camper, stays with the camper, the whole camper can come out and everything I did stays in, right? Versus if I did a whole build out inside of a truck bed, it kind of becomes a part of it. And that's another reason I went this route. And I, I just, you know, cause I was looking at these things too. Now I ended up doing a brand new one uh, because I could and because I'm, uh, I worked with part of four wheel camper. I've partnered up with them and you know, I'm doing some stuff behind the scenes, some work for them as well. Uh, but like you, you can totally, and I hear people say that these are super expensive and they are new. Most things that are new are super expensive. You can totally pick one of these up less than 10 grand used that needs some work all day. And that was my initial thing I was going to do. Get a used one, fix it up, restore it. No problem. So these are achievable for less budget or, you know, you get an older truck, get an older camper. You can get into it less than a van build probably and you're way more capable uh pop top the reason i like the pop top is you know it it, it drives like this thing I'm, I'm impressed with how well this drives it still drives like a normal car pretty much and someone like me who has a home base and i'm not living in this full time it's night. I'm driving my truck more as a daily driver than I am camping in it. So it's like, I like being able to have that drivability of it, which brings me back to another reason I did the base model and my thoughts now that I've owned it for not that long. Uh, I was thinking about doing a whole cabinet, right? Putting my own water system in things like that. And I'm not so sure anymore that I want to do that. The reason is, I'll say it again. This is my daily driver. I don't have another car really that I drive. And by building all that stuff out, I'm adding the weight, adding the things in here that just stays in here, stays with the truck. And I found myself, I pulled the propane tanks. Out. I, I kind of like that. I can literally empty everything out of here when I'm just using it as a normal truck. And then when I want to go camping, I can put everything in and I'm not stuck with the weight, right? So I don't know. I might not do a cabinet for that reason. And one of the things I'll say too, is I've talked to a couple four wheel camper owners before I bought this and both of them told me they would do the same thing. They would buy a base model. They said they drive their truck around. Basically they're driving around with a sink and a water tank that's empty 80% of the time. And they're still just filling up a water jug and throwing it in there because they don't want to winterize it, which makes sense. So I kind of like it because it's kind of a shell. I used it the other day, threw a bunch of stuff in here, was able to lock it, keep it out of the weather. I love this choice so far. I'm glad I ended up with this. <clears throat> I am going, I am going to do some upgrades and I guess I'll talk about that. I guess I'm doing this talking piece so that you can kind of learn from my experience with this so far. If I was going to buy another brand new camper, four wheel camper today, I'd probably do the same thing. Uh, <clears throat> I like that it's enclosed, has a floor, has a few things. I like that I can take the whole thing out, take the whole thing in. The few things I am going to do for sure is I'm going to add a shore power port. Uh, basically the same type of shore power I used to put in the buses where I'll have a battery charger inside of here and then a 110 outlet out there because I don't want to run an extension cord in the door. It's just weird. So that way, if I am parked underneath the tree or I'm not driving it all the time, basically I can charge my house batteries to 100% before I go on a trip because again, in Oregon, I don't really have a lot of sun. So that's why I really depend on the DC to DC charger. I'm going to add a short power port with a battery charger, 100%. Also, I'm going to add 110. There's no 110 in here, and I didn't realize that. The, the thing is, with my experience, that's very easy for me to put in. So, not a big deal, but I am going to add 110. And 
make sure to subscribe to the channel because I'm going to make videos of all this stuff. So if you do end up doing this, you want to know how I'm doing these things, make sure to subscribe so that you can learn that too. I'm going to add 110, not a lot, and I'm not really sure where it's going yet, <laughs> but I am going to add 110 in here. Also, I'm going to put a fridge in, which most people just put a chest fridge over here, but I'm going to add a port. So I have to wire in, hard wire in a port to, uh, to be able to plug the fridge in. So those are the things that I'm going to do for sure. I might do some other things, I'm not sure. I might still build out a cabinet, I'm not sure. For sure, I'm adding in the short, short power charger. I'm gonna add in 110, and I'm gonna add an outlet for a fridge and put a fridge in. Storage? So I might just use totes and just keep the stuff in my garage, like with some kitchen stuff. Again, so I can take it all out. Like I took the propane tanks out, and then when I need to use it, I'll put it in. So yeah, that's the end of this video. Let's take it out. Again, my name is Isaac. This is a four-wheel camper Hawk base model with the rollover couch and a couple add-ons. I really like this camper a lot. I tried to be as thorough as I could with this tour so that anybody who was thinking about doing this could watch this and like see what these things are like. And, and I'm trying to do this from my perspective too as somebody who builds out vans and buses so that you can kind of see what I would do differently and what I am gonna do. I'm super excited about this camper and what it's capable of doing. So if you've been on my channel a long time, thank you so much. And I hope you're as excited as I am to do some family trips with this thing and for some of the upgrades I'm gonna do. And if you've never been on my channel before, you're thinking about a four wheel camper or you have one and you're gonna do some upgrades, consider subscribing because we're going to be doing some really cool off-road adventures and I'm going to be doing some some uh, some add-ons and I guess hop in the comments below let me know what you think what would you do differently do you think I messed up buying this and then one of the questions I have for you guys do you think that as I do some of the upgrades to this camper that I should do I was thinking I would just do it all in one video add the shore power charger, add the fridge port, add the 110, or should I do it in separate videos so that somebody who wants to do one thing or the other, let me know what you think in the comments below. Should I break that video series up or should I just do it all in one video? Anyways, I'm taking this one out. Four wheel campers, thank you so much for helping me get into this thing. I'm super stoked about it. I'm hyped to, to do some things with it. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in another video. Hit the thumbs up, comment, all that good stuff. Uh, this is Isaac. It's getting dark. I better go home. Thanks for watching. Peace.